the motivation behind this talk is that phenomenological duality theory tend to lead to shift in symplectic structures. Um, Um, so, for instance, these are both examples you'll find back in PTVV. So, cell uh, duality. We'll give you a two minus n shifted structure. On Moduli of vector bundles, algebraic vector bundles. On an n dimensional, so an n dimensional clavi yell. Scheme X. You will probably want it smooth proper. Or a logical example, like a duality. Similarly, to give, give you a two minus n shifted structure. On moduli of local systems. On an oriented manifold. An, an oriented manifold. So the question then is. What does arithmetic duality give us? So, so things like partout tape, local tape duality, and so on. And the various global duality theories. So, now, at this point, things get a bit tricky because. We're just talking broad terms about motivation, but then it would be similar to talks that Min Yong probably gave years ago. The problem is actually making things work, so working out the technical details. So it's a bit tricky to strike the right balance, but there are there are sort of two two main difficulties in doing this. So the first one is So typically, arithmetic duality theorems, you're looking at things like cohomology with QL coefficients. <clears throat> so the cohomology spaces you want to stack you will be working with uh, are analytic analytic. The first problem is to set up the non Archimedean derived analytic. Moduli spaces and stacks. So the first problem is just setting up the theory so you've got objects on which you can even talk about what it would mean to have a shift in symplectic structure. And then the next problem you have is fake twists. You see, back in, in both of these examples back here, the cell duality it was working with a <laughs> so the dualizing bundle is the trivial bundle. Well, here, Pankhaya duality, you were choosing something that was that was oriented. Because although there exists perfectly good duality theories without those conditions, 
they end up involving, so in this case, your dualizing line bundle, or in this case, your orientation bundle. And the problem is not nearly so. so uh, with a manifold, you can do something like pass the orient double cover. Getting rid of tape twists involves parts of infinite, infinite cyclotomic extension where everything ends up on the internet. So, and so, so that, that, that causes a lot of problems in its own. So, so I will, I will, I'll start by talking about what we do in the first case. So, so how we address the first problem. Um, so the derived non archimedean Now, if you're doing so this, will, this will be over QM. Uh, If you're doing derived algebraic geometry, basic building blocks are CDGAs, like so the differential graded algebras over your base field. And there are various different setups for derived analytic geometry, but it turns out that as long as you're working with th so things without boundary, you can actually, as your as your building blocks, you have to work with a slight modification of that where you're working with dagger algebras. So they have PG dagger algebra. <coughs> okay. So it's a CDGA. Uh, or, uh, I'm afraid I, I, I use chain notation. It's, it's, it's official things are never too far from what's subconscious. <laughs> A lot of people would rewrite these as co-chain complex and have negative indices. The idea is if you've got a chain complex like this, so CDGA means you have a graded commutative product. So this is over QL, it's a chain complex, so the squared is zero. Or commutative graded commutative product. So AM tensor AM to AM plus N such that BA is minus one to the big A take B A B. So thus far we could just have been talking about derived algebraic geometry, but we, do, <laughs> we now say A naught is a dagger algebra. Which means it's effectively some ring of overconvergent functions. So it's it's a quotient of well, this is um But, so, um, our series. Merging on some holy disk. D row one up to D row n, or the rows bigger than the R's. 
Um, you can write out the formula if you with the condition if you want. It's just it's, it's just becomes a condition on the coefficients. So it's it's probably a very mixed audience, but the so it's things of the form some a new the new such that we take the evaluation of a new times <coughs> that's finite. Well, well, not as you wish. So, well, the gross of that. So the idea here is that you're you're looking at something which converge on some larger disk than this, and in, in a completely non-standard convention, I do allow these r's to be zero. So in the, in the paper where I wrote this up, I used the term quasi dagger, but the idea is I, I do want to consider localizations. So sometimes, say I'm working at a point, I might want to consider germs at that point. So I'd be looking at functions which converge on some some disk, some over zero. So we're allowing, allowing ours there. So that, that's the first condition. And the second condition is that just that um, each AN is a finite A0 one. And not, I won't explain exactly how <laughs> it gives you the current theory to everything else, but the, the, the reason it works is that these are examples of, of um, rings with entire functional calculus. So because these are analytic rings, it's risen in, a, in an analytic way, you can, given any power series converging on the on the whole plot, on the whole plot, or on that fine space, it can you can evaluate it with coefficients in here, and that's in a consistent way, and that's that's called an entire functional calculus, and that in turn ends up giving the same theory as Lurie's pre geometries. The, the proof involves um, Kubowitz invalid theorem. But the, the, the idea is just that you can express any Stein space in terms of things like that and that's so it does actually give you give you all the data you need finite a module meaning finitely generated uh finite rank finite rank yeah okay finite rank yeah um yeah so it's just so it's sort of coherence condition so that we can so, so that these are and yeah and so the and the global version of this so if you want to think of the sort of space that we'll be working with <laughs> So we can then say, so a DG, DG analytic space. Is then a pair DG uh, dagger. Um, oh, I, I use the notation pi up a naught because Chuck and Fontaine and Kapranov originally used high lower naught. They may well have been following Konsevich. Yeah. But this is a should be thought of as a sub object rather than a quotient. And pi naught means something else when you're working with stacks. I think Lurie probably uses T lower naught or something like that. But the, the idea is you have a classical thing. So that so that you can get pi naught makes space. And OX pre sheaf DG dagger algebras. Uh, on the site of open ethanoids. Mm -hmm. Such that 
we look at H0 of our X, that is just the structure sheaf, the space we're working with. And we take HI on it. Well, it's just something that's some extension of your original space by various different modules. Jonathan, can you, yeah. can you make that comment again? So, so you said that it's an example of uh, lower entire function calculus. It, are these all examples? Or are there? Oh, is every example of this? Um, so, I think you'd have to allow, so you, you, potentially there are allowing things to go to infinity, but, but basically it's just, it's, 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 so it's, 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 condition it will give you just all examples yeah because you, you, you can always take filtered co-limits of those as well so it's just it's the it's the monad you get when given any finite set you take the <laughs> and then you pass the filtered co-limits in general so it's yeah um okay so the, the, the and the reason that i've set this up with these dagger algebras rather than Arbitrary that brings with entire functional calculus or anything like that is that there's a key property, which is that given <coughs> if we have a profile set S, then what we can do is we can take, we can look at the S value points of one of these algebras because this, this comes, with a comes with a natural topology. As this is an end back algebra. So if we look at, if we let underline A of S, the continuous maps to make it play. This is a that's a CDGA. So, so we do that in each level, putting these all together, we, we get a, a CDGA. And the key property is that if we have a quasi isomorphism. to be so it's something that induces isomorphisms on homology then underline s underline a of s to underline no, underline b of s is a quasi isomorphism <clears throat> and and that this that makes use of quite a lot of machinery so so you, you it combines the good enough theory and properties you have from these dagger algebras with various model structures for for EFC algebras and and it does and that's where it's important that, that I'm allowing these R's to possibly be zero so that gives enough flexibility to ensure that that this works or actually I suppose at this point well, that was true anyway, yeah. So it's, it's the point where I need free resolution. Right, so, so if you think about it, then this is what we need. So for things like Galois representation, anything like that, you're looking at maps from profinite groups and things like that. So this, this is what enables you to have a notion of a point, so a, a function from so, something profinite to this, and this, this tells you it's behaving in a nice way. So then what we can do is, given a Dmax, 
we can form a sheaf or a sheaf of um, a proatile sheaf. I underline X for any uh, DG dagger algebra. Okay. So we want to evaluate this on this, this can be a, a price hole affine. What we do is we evaluate A itself on. So if you take some affine scheme and you look at a set of components, that is a profinite set. And that's the that's how the sort of proitile topology works. An example here might be. If X is some field, this could be an infinite field extension. Here you'd be looking at components of each, each of those. So you, you write that at a limit and then take the limit of those the components at each stage. So in, in that case, you're not going to see two, you're not going to be getting that much, but then so when you start tensoring those together, this this is what it means you've now got right all sheaf that you can, and so this, so this, this, this immediately gives you notions of local, sort of local, a valued local systems and things like that. The P, the P property is it only true if you give A the Bonnach? The topology generated by the Bonnock structure? Uh, it, it definitely depends on the topology. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Or, or it's, it's going to be it's in Bonnock, isn't it? Because it's because of the, yeah, because it's that. that, that yes. Yeah. And, and it does. And that's that's where it becomes really important in the case I was talking about where you've got the, where you're allowing the R's to be zero. Quite often in the, in the sort of dagger affinoid literature, You'll embed things in in the corresponding Tate algebra, but if you're allowing the R's to be zero, that's just the evaluation map. But that, that, that's got a kernel, and you can't then yeah, it wouldn't then work because you're getting in the spin topology coming in and so on. Right. So now, so now we're in a position to look at things like modul so moduli of analytic local systems. So analytic moduli of local systems and so on. So uh observation isn't it? So what we do is Got, got my scheme, got, got the scheme, We've got the prioritile site of that. We can then use it using this sheaf we just hooked up, and this is a sheaf of, of CDGAs. There's then a notion of a of, of a group, so the groupoid of. A valued genome forces. So this is just there's, there's, there's a derived stack associated with this stack. There's a, there's a standard way of constructing a, a simplicial set that you have here where the points are rank R tall. Um, yeah, rank R A modules, like projective A modules. And so on, but you've got a whole. You've got some higher homotopy stuff going on because it's a, a CDGA, and 
I should emphasize that not, I'm, I'm just using BGL here as an example of, a, of, of some coefficients we can take. So those who are interested, any, any algebraic stack, any derived algebraic stack will do there. So, it might be perfect complexes and so on. So, so this this functor here, this, this is the modular functor, the derived modular functor of rank R LAB local systems. Um, Proletile local systems. And so, in particular, if you take X to be a field, this gives you things like Galois. So, this will give you the derived moduli factor of Galois representations. So, the, so the analytic drawing. And I think I know this Or if you do things like um, the ring of integers, so S, set S of points, then if you derive moduli of GFS. So on. Does this look like, 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 like there's a space like pseudo representations for my. Like, um, like it's like this is the derived version of that. I mean, how can you say anything about this place? I don't think about this. Well, I suppose if we look at the <clears throat> if we look at the QL valued points, yeah. that really is just the usual rank LL yeah. system. Yeah. Okay. And, and likewise, mm -hmm. so if, if you if you stick in just ordinary algebras rather than DG algebras here, you're getting effectively ranked. So, Rank, rank, rank NA modules with the with, with the topology you know, provided you're given them the right. So the reason I'm using proitile is to avoid the horrible limit you get with the. So so yeah, it, it is just it's just that and, and typically for representability, it's potentially a bit subtle because there are some quite weird proitile things that happen. But you can always just cut down to an open set on which thing where you have decent plan. So you've got you've got this thing that's representable. Then. So that's so so by by this point we've sort of satisfied the first problem in that we have an object on which we can start asking the question about. Do you need L to be invert from X for any of this business? Not for, not for this. Not, no. I mean, you can not 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 to make this definition. I mean, but representability and so on. Representability then becomes so. Yeah, representability will tend to be a bit, will be much more of a problem if it isn't. Okay. So, yeah. In fact, it's going to assume that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose um, usually you start looking at crystalline things. For, yeah, or, 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 adding, or adding additional hypotheses. So that, yeah, yeah. If, if, if I have time, I might say a little bit about that. But, but yeah, basically, but somehow. The, the main problem was just defining the functor. Here we here we have the functor. <laughs> With suitable conditions, it becomes representable. It's, it's the takeaway there. And so now, one, one thing we can say is that if so, I, I, having having used up more than half my time, I should at least try to mention a shifted syntactic structure. So if um, Idea of how, how things should work. This is this is effectively a form of mapping stack, and th th there's, so there's a two shifted symplectic structure. On EGR. So that means that the given 
I've got some point Z inside that thing up there. What happens is you can use that shifted symplectic structure. We can, we can pull that back, pull it omega. So we get red upper star omega. And now, what we have to do is we take Derived Durham cohomology. So it's the second piece of the Hodge filtration on derived Durham cohomology because that and that's that's effectively how shifted symplectic structures are defined. And and then so at this point I'm going to stick it. This is my next point. So this was just looking at that. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, that, that's just that as, as an abstract algebra. And what you can do is, so the drum cohomology of, so derived drum cohomology of A itself, what you do is you take some quasi free resolution of, of A. So that means in degree zero, you're taking one of those rings of conversion functions. And then something free generated over those, and so on. And you, you can you can always do that. And then you form differentials of that in the usual analytic setting, which is slightly different from the abstract algebraic ones. And that there's a point like this condition. And then you take the product total complex because the problem is that unlike the case with underlying things where you've just got something in degree zero, this this complex goes on forever. So the, the alternating powers go on forever. And importantly, you have to you know you, you look up, you turn to the page of Weibel where it's talking about spectral sequences of a double complex, and it tells you you have to take the product total complex to get quasi-isomorphism invariance. So that that's 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 how we define the wrong cohomology, and then saying taking F two means you just ignore these bits and start there. Truncation. So this in turn maps to There are the wrong cohomology of A, and then well, it's back there. I don't define this for one of those digit dagger algebras, but for any any complex of invalid spaces, the same construction. So this is that gives us this thing. And now the idea is, if we had a trace map, we could then. Sorry, is there any difference between commuting back to and math BBL? Oh, so I, I should, uh, certainly speaking, I should speak. So, yeah, thanks. I, more hygienic to do it that way, right? So <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll try to take it. <clears throat> um, so, so the question is can we, and uh, let's see, we had that in. So this would be two, that was two shifted, so there would be a two in here. And then there's a question of whether this maps to. Do we have a trace map here? And if you're working with something smooth and proper of an algebraic closed field, then you do have a trace map. 
in any other setting, paint twists can that you want, you want to be picking a paint twist. Look, right, in, in, in particular, that, that, that construction basically gives you your shifted syntactic structures in, in those in those cases where you're working on algebraically closed fields. But be of interest. We want to incorporate tape twists. And the solution is one that will actually work for a lot of other settings where you only have a dualizing line bundle. So not, so not just a collabi yeah, or things like that. So so the idea is well, a a weighted DG dagger algebra. So it has a uh, it has a decomposition. So we're gonna have All right, some decomposition um, such that I think we need this to be a finite sum in each degree. Uh, yeah, finite sum in each degree. Um, so decomposition like that, and this this we just ask to to respect the multiplication. So WM and WM WN and WM plus N. And then what we do is. What do you now look at is we start sticking tape twists in. So inside here, what we do is Give each of those terms a tape twist. So similar to the algebra we were looking before, but component of degree n, give a tape twist by n. And then what happens is we've got a tape twist. So if we've got a trace map with a twist in it. The effect of that is to pull out so then so at each point so at point Z so we get Reflective structure initially it lives in what size, but then here we're going to have Now what we can do is we can we, we can use that weight decomposition on A 
you know, went through the detail of the cohort. So we can rewrite it as. And now, so if we've got a trace map, so if we've got something like that. Then gives us so that's listed by listed by one or I put by J because so yeah in, in, so in all Galva cases it'll be twisted by one but if you're if you're working with higher dimensional things you want different twists in there potentially so I'll just I'll, I'll give you the general statement then restrict to one and just look at Galois groups. So if you've got a trace map like this, that then gives you a trace of this thing lying in. So you just pick out the weight J thing that find a trace of that. Now to so, so what's happened is we've got a shifted stru structure, of, so shifted synthetic structure of, of uh, assuming we've got a, a duality theory working here. That is why nicely we end up with a shifted synthetic structure. So it's a two minus n shifted synthetic structure all the way j. Um, and but, but, I mean, so that there, there are representability for these things, things like this, an example that we're interested in gets quite subtle. So, could, so you end up having to take pro objects for those who are interested, because eventually, have so typically you'll have non zero cohomology for infinitely many shifts. So you end up with so these the pro representing things you end up with. You've got generators in, although it's finite, it's finitely many generators in each weight. There are generators in infinitely many weights. So there's quite a lot of infinite stuff happening, but that finiteness in each weight is enough for things like one generator to make sense. And in, in particular, this gives. This leads to things like shifted price oscillations. So that, that means that on your on the on, on the, the, the structure sheet of, of your derived moduli stack, you, you get a Poisson bracket of degree same degree of shifted symmetric structure. So I'll try to and then also. The various quantization theorems also work, but you have to set your, your sort of Planck's constant h bar to have the same weight as this. So I'll just briefly write down a sort of example a lot of people would be interested in, which is. And there are also similar things that happen with, with, with Lagrangians. So one thing we can do is we can look at um, yes. That thing we were looking at before. So uh, Q 
which I ought to call. So if I call that, I will. I will. Yeah. 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 But then the sort of example we get is we can look at So what happens if you're working over a, a ring of integers where you've localized some finite set S, and then you can map that to corresponding thing where you're, you're just take, taking the taking all those local fields. So what happens is, so local tape duality tells you that this is this thing has a it's a zero shifted structure. Oh, wait. And that is, and, and, and it also tells you that this map here is a Lagrangian. And then Matthew Tate tells you that this map here is also Lagrangian. Um, so, in particular, just being a Lagrangian tells you this this carries a Poisson bracket, but also, it also means if you take the derived intersection of these, you get something minus one shifted, which is then, and I think if, if I'm remembering the terms correctly, so that's then something like a, 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 a Selma groups, expression of Selma groups, and so so you end up with derived intersection of people, so it's some sort of modulized cellular type stuff and that then carries a minus one shifted symplectic structure of, of of weight one coming from that tape twist um which, which in turn means you can so assuming it's just assuming a, a condition on the on the dualizing line bundle satisfied that would then lead to quantization which means you have things like the shift cycles and so on and, I think that's, as I'm basically out of time, I think that's a sensible place to start.